Hi everyone, have you ever wondered how you could make charms from waste cardboard? Well, a few years back I was a maker for a large US craft channel and I made a tutorial showing people how I made these charms from cereal box card. Now the tutorial, which I believe is still doing the rounds on YouTube, was just a static tutorial showing you step-by-step -step instructions with images and I believe music in the background so I thought it would be really good fun to redo that tutorial and show you exactly how I made these in a video. My name is Jilly and I'm from funcrafts to do at home.com. If you enjoy this video don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get regular updates of all my videos. The things you're going to need cereal box card a piece of sandpaper to condition the card. You're going to need a selection of craft punches and if you don't have good access to craft supplies don't worry because I will try and source some for you and they will be on my Amazon craft supplies page. You can find a link on there if you visit my website and the address for my website will be down below. You're also going to need some jump rings, a pair of pliers that will punch neat holes in your charms. You will need a glue brush and some glue, some white acrylic paint. And if you can get hold of them, you might want to put some of these tiny resin domes on some of your charms. Now, the company that I bought these from, I don't believe is in existence anymore. I will try to source some for you elsewhere. So the first thing you do is condition the cardboard so that it will make it easier for each piece to glue together when you punch out the shapes. So take each punch that you've chosen to use and make five shapes from each. And what you're going to be doing with these shapes is gluing them together to form a stack. And as you can see, I chose to use some a circle shape, star shapes, and there's heart shapes. I used Dishwasher Safe Mod Podge to glue these all together. I did have one viewer ask me if my items are waterproof, and the answer to that was no, they're not, they're splash proof. But then I found this Mod Podge dishwasher safe and I've used that to, to glue all my shapes together to form stacks. And in using the dishwasher safe Mod Podge, it's going to make these charms more than just splash proof. <laughs> Although I don't recommend you put these in the dishwasher. There's really no need. So the next thing I did was to take some white acrylic and paint the back and sides of each charm with that just to give it a neutral um, colour to paint onto. I use parchment paper when I'm drying my charms to reduce the risk of anything sticking. Now another viewer called Lisa very helpfully gave me this hint. When you are sanding small items like this use a nail file. So thank you very much Lisa for that. It's a very helpful suggestion and much easier than using sandpaper. You will see when I when I paint the gold paint onto some of my charms I didn't sand them enough. So I would suggest that when you pa if you paint yours gold um before you paint make sure that you have sanded every surface as smooth as you possibly can. So you can see on one of my curly edge, one, well on a couple of them actually, I haven't done a very good job of sanding. So once again I'm going to give them a good coat of dishwasher safe Mod Podge over the front, back and sides of each charm. Now these are the designs that I'm using. You could, if you wanted to, do as I did in my original tutorial that I did a few years back. 
on which I put designs on the front and back of each charm. For this one, I've only put designs on the front and painted the backs gold. This is just a scrap um, of one of my designs that I printed out to use for another project. I don't have this available online, but these this sheet of designs is available in my Etsy shop. So just follow what you see me doing here. I do remove the bottom of my craft punches to make it easier to see where I'm lining up to make sure I don't get any white space at all around the design. You can put the bottoms back on the punches fairly easily. So. As I said, I, I will try and find some of these teeny little resin domes for you. But I'm not sure that anyone still does these. If anyone out there knows of where you can get these tiny... I'm not sure what they measure. I think the, the designs are about 1.5 centimetre across so these resin domes are quite a bit smaller than that and I don't want resin that's going to cover the whole design because we need to leave room to punch a hole in and having resin over the entire design is going to make it harder to punch holes These are the ones that I made a necklace with. So they're all done and they're ready to have holes punched in them. The punch that I used I think is a 1.8 millimeter hole. And this punch is on my Amazon Craft Supplies page, which you will find on my website. And there's a link to my website down below. So jump rings. To fit jump rings, you can see from the next shots, the best way to fit jump rings is to twist the ends away from each other rather than pulling them open. I mean, people that use jump rings regularly already know this. I didn't know this. When I first began to use jump rings, I used to pull them apart rather than twist them apart. And if you actually twist them apart, it does make them a lot more easy to twist back together again. And there's the ones that I did already with the jump rings in. It's very effective and you can use these for any project that you you know you want to. I did make a necklace with three of mine and you could put one onto a bangle or as many as you want really. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get regular updates of all my new videos.
and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.